me, your man, Louis T. Welcome to the command post. You know what it is. Post up. Take command. Now, of course, I'm your commander in chief, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. So um, the latest Washington commander's top 30 visits list is out. And I think it's going to be one of the final ones. I don't foresee them adding too many more names to the list as we are literally uh, closing in on a week out from the draft. I don't know how many more visits you can squeeze in with the time allotted. So um, I think this is probably the last look at it. Maybe they add a name or two to the list. But as we know, most of these guys that are on this list are currently in Washington right now as we speak, uh, conducting these visits. So the list now, the last time we saw it was at 19 names. It is now at 24 names. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the list. Um, it is 24 names long. And uh, we've gone through most of these names. As I've mentioned, it, it was at 19 the last time uh, we went through the list. They've added since then five more names. Um, some, some of these names should ring a bell because I've talked about them on some of these top seven ranking groups like Eric All, for instance, the tight end out of Iowa. I talked about him. And if you want to hear what I had to say, go watch the tight end uh, top seven ranking video where I mentioned his name and I talked about him because he's a unique case in the upcoming draft and, and a guy that kind of fits the athletic profile of what Washington has been looking for uh, in these visits thus far. Another name uh, to, to note here is Jalex Hunt, the linebacker out of Houston Christian. He's very interesting because a lot of people view him as a defensive end at the next level. This is a former safety that converted to linebacker. And when you watch his tape, he's standing up as a linebacker 90% of the time. And I think a lot of people see his ability to rush and just think that teams that are looking at him, because this guy is 6'4", 252 pounds, which that fits the DNA profile of a, of a pass rusher. And I think a lot of people just see his ability to rush the quarterback and assume that whomever drafts him is going to convert him full time to an edge rusher, maybe a guy that can stand up and do some things, but more likely than not is going to be getting after the quarterback. I think Washington is looking at him as a chess piece. And, and these are the types of guys. Jalex Hunt is a guy that kind of fits what we saw in Dallas from Dan Quinn, a guy that has uh, the ability to do multiple things, stand up, be a, a drop backer, blitz the quarterback from multiple you know different places on the field, uh, being a traditional uh, two-point stance on the outside, um, it, it almost at a seven-point, um, a two-point stance, in, in, but almost in a seven-tech, you know, on that out, that wide outside rush lane uh, and come after the quarterback that way. Um, he can do that, right? So he's kind of an interesting case. Another name that was added to the list. Um, as you continue to look down this list, uh, they added a uh, couple of offensive linemen, Isaiah Adams, uh, a tackle out of Illinois, Brandon Coleman, a, a guard slash tackle out of TCU. So th those are the first times that we've seen guys that uh, may potentially be viewed as a guard. Uh, Coleman, I think, is more so a guard than he is um, a tackle. But th that's the first time we've kind of seen that type of player on the list. Most of these guys have been pure tackles that you look to try to add to the mix here in Washington. Jarvis Brownlee Jr. was an interesting guy because when I was doing my mock draft for Washington, um, he was one of the guys that was around at the time where I think Washington is going to take a corner. And if you remember in mine, I took the pit corner um, in one of the drafts. And then I think I took, um, I took the um, Virginia state corner in the other um mock draft so that's the range I think Washington that fifth round range and Jarvis Brown Lee Jr. is going to be I think available in that fifth round range so it's interesting that they're sniffing around him uh, I think that makes a ton of sense um, so looking at this list I, I don't want to talk about the list um, itself as much even though I am fascinated with this list I think this is one of the best top 30 official visit lists that I've seen uh, with regards to this team in recent memory, this is a tremendous list of guys that fit the DNA profile of what Washington should be looking for if you look at what the coaching staff that's here 
um, has a track record of utilizing the kind of guy that they want to utilize and the things that they told us when they got here, what we're going to be as a football team. These players kind of represent that to a T. So, or not kind of, these players represent that to a T. So if these are the guys that they're going after, uh, it makes a ton of sense because they told us we were going to get more athletic. We were going to be faster. We were going to be physical. Um, these players exemplify that. So, um, I, I think there's been a lot of conversation about Washington commander smoke screens this draft, and I don't think uh, a lot of it holds any weight. I don't think there's a lot of merit to any smoke screens with Washington to this point of the draft because, uh, or the draft process rather, because they're at number two, right? And so to me, being at number two doesn't involve you needing a smoke screen, especially when number one has already declared what it is they're going to do. Right. There's, it's no secret. And anybody that thinks the Bears are doing anything other than drafting Caleb Williams is living on a different alternative universe. OK, the Bears have already made their decision. They're drafting Caleb Williams one. So you don't have to try to fool anybody if you're Washington, unless unless you're trading out of two and you want teams behind you to think that you're interested in all of these quarterbacks. And if you don't come up here and get the one you want, then we're going to take him. If that's the case, fine, so be it. But Washington isn't trading the number two pick. I think I've read somewhere Albert Breer said there's no way in hell Washington is trading the pick. Uh, they're not trading the pick. They were never trading the number two pick. You don't get to this point, have a chance to select a guy that can change your franchise and move out of that slot. Why do you think so many teams are interested in coming up? Because they see a potential player that can change the fortunes of their franchise. We're not going to give up that opportunity. Part of the allure of this job this offseason was that we had the number two pick and that we were going to be in a position to select one of these quarterbacks. And that is exactly what they're going to do. So there's no smoke screen involved in that. However, I do think that for the first time this draft process, Washington is performing a smoke screen. And I want you to take a look at this list. I've talked about this already. But I assumed at some point we would have one or two pop up here at um, specific positions. Take a look at this list. What is omitted from this list? There are 24 names up here. I find it hard to believe that in... What we have talked about is the deepest position in this draft class being wide receiver. I find it hard to believe that not one wide receiver is on this list. Now, while running back doesn't seem like this drastic need, I still don't think they love the running back position as is. I think they are okay with it. I don't think they love it. I think they want to add to it, and I expect them. Now, I've changed my mind because... I told you earlier, maybe two weeks ago, that I don't think they're going to add a running back. But I've drafted a running back in my mock drafts, both of them, both times. I think they're going to draft a running back. And here's why. I think this is the biggest smoke screen that Washington had, and really the only smoke screen that they've performed this offseason to this point, is the quarterback, the, the running back in the wide receiver position. There isn't a single running back nor a wide receiver on this list. Now, you tell me that Washington isn't at a bare minimum going to draft a, a wide receiver. You look me in my eyes, okay, look me in my eyes, <laughs> and you tell me Washington isn't going to draft a wide receiver. Because I'm not buying it, okay? At some point, unless they're trading for Brandon Ayuk, which I don't see happening, I won't rule it out because of the history there, but unless they're drafting or trading for Brandon Ayuk, there's no way you can convince me that in this deep of a wide receiver draft class, a team that could desperately use another addition to that room isn't going to add a receiver at some point. That just doesn't make any sense to me, and I'm not buying it. This is a smokescreen. The fact that Washington hasn't brought in a single wide receiver for a top 30 visit, has not brought in a single running back for a top 30 visit, tells me that they don't want anybody to know. This is what I think. I'm drawing an inference here, okay? This is me going off the grid 
and, and giving you what I think is going on here. I think this is a smokescreen. I think they don't want anybody to know who they're interested in. Because with all the picks that they have, if you don't know, if there's no tell, and they've done a great job of keeping poker face, right? So the only way you're going to know who Washington is interested in is by their activity pre-draft. If you, there's no official 30 visit, then you don't know unless someone has said something and nobody's saying anything from the Washington camp right now. So there isn't any tells here. If I don't bring in a guy for an official 30 visit, then you don't know if I'm interested in him or not. I, I can show up at a pro day. I can show up, you know, and have an interview with a guy at the combine. But everybody's doing that. I'm not unique in doing that. So in my mind, them not having a receiver, them not having a running back come in for a visit allows them to keep their name off the grid in terms of their level of interest in a player. And it's going to put them in a position. When you have five picks on day two of the draft, you have so much optionality, as Adam Peters calls it. You have so much at your disposal that you can do so many things. And if you don't tip your hand and another team doesn't know that I need to go get this guy because Washington's interested, there may be a player that falls right into your lap that you absolutely love because you didn't tip and show your hand. The only reason teams jump in front of other teams is because they know, or at least they think they know, that, hey, XYZ team is interested in this player. We better go get up in front of them or else they're going to take him, right? That's how it works. That's why you see a team trade up 18 spots in front of one team. They could have traded up 20, they could have traded up, you know, five spots later. They could have allowed that player to get closer to them, right? They could have waited and then traded up. It wouldn't have cost them as much because you don't want to trade up that far if you don't have to. But you trade up that far because you know if I don't, someone else will. Or if I don't, that team's going to take him. So I have to get in front of them in order to get the player that I desire. Washington isn't tipping their hand at receiver or running back. I am convinced they're going to draft both at some point in this draft because I don't think they're sold on the running back room. I wouldn't be if I were them. Love Brian Robinson Jr., love Austin Eckler. I don't love Chris Rodriguez Jr. I've made that abundantly clear. They brought in um, another running back I think they brought in uh, during the, the free agency period. He's not here to stay, okay? He's, he's simply a, a, a filler, okay? I think you add another guy to this room if you're Washington. But more importantly, forget about running back, because if they do nothing at running back, I won't blink. Receiver is the one that I think is the biggest smokescreen, because you're not telling me that with all these talented receivers, you don't want any of them. I, I just, I'm not buying that. I don't think they want anyone else to know who it is that they really like in this draft at receiver because they're in a range in the second and third round where if there's a, a second round guy, a, a guy with a third round grade that they like, they don't want to have to spend a second round pick on that guy. If they can get him to the third round, that's what they're going to try to do. Or if they can get him as close as they can to the third round and if they get antsy, they can trade up and get him. That's what they're going to do. But if you tell people that you're interested, that guy may be gone before you get a chance to draft him, right? So... I think Washington is, is definitely engaging in smokescreen activity with their official 30 visits because they're not tipping their hand at receiver. What do you think? Are, are, are they just not going to draft a receiver? Are they not interested in the receiver position, the running back position? There, it, there isn't a single running back or receiver on the top 30 official visits list. Meanwhile, there's a bunch of linebackers, there's a bunch of defensive ends, there's a bunch of offensive linemen, there's a bunch of quarterbacks, you know, all of these tight ends, all these positions that we know we need, but they don't have to do anything at, yet receiver is a position that we definitely need, and there's no activity there. I'm not buying it. What says you? Leave it down in the comment section. I think it's brilliant on their part. Brilliant smokescreen to not allow other teams to get wind of what it is you're actually thinking about doing at a position that I think a lot of teams are going to be going after in this draft. You don't want to tip your hand. 
keep it close to the vest so that when that opportunity presents itself, you'll be able to strike without anyone else knowing that this is a guy that we've been after all along. I think it's smart on the part of Washington because they're drafting a receiver. Um, if you ask me, it's going to be right in that third round range. Same thing with running back. If you don't make any moves, uh, unless you're going to trade those two fifth round picks up into the fourth to get you a running back, which is why I think the best value is in this draft. Uh, but again, we need more picks. So I, I don't see them trading away picks. I see them trading back and acquiring more picks because they're shaping and molding this roster. It's less likely that they do that um, early in the draft. I think it's more likely that they, um, I'm talking about trade back. It's less likely that they do that early in the draft. Uh, it's more likely that they do that maybe a little bit further back in the draft. But um, to me, if they're going to do something trade-wise, it's going to be trading up early in the draft, especially um, less likely as you get later on into the draft. But in any event, uh, I digress. What says you? Smokescreen or no? Nah? Washington doesn't have a single running back nor receiver on their top 30 official visit list. I find it hard to believe that they don't have any interest, any intrigue in those two positions in this draft, specifically wide receiver. I think it's a smokescreen and a damn good one by the commanders. Leave it down in the comment section. Tell me what you think. That's going to do it for me, your man Louis T, here on the command post. Until next time, you know what it is. Post up. Take command. You guys, have a good one. See you next time.